Yo, what's up, Golden Gamers? Welcome back to episode two of The Doctor's Note. Now, today I wanted to dive into a really interesting set between Amsa and Mango at the Big House. This is gr grand final set between them, and I thought it was really interesting because while I was watching it, I felt like it was very back and forth. Like there was a natural storyline that was evolving with the gameplay. And so I wanted to kind of dive into that and break it down in the game why basically and what the three phases are of this grand final set. The first phase being Amsa having the advantage. The second phase being Mango having the advantage. And the third phase being they're both going back and forth. It's the last game. And how does the unique stage play into the finale of the set? And what are some unique things that happen there? And so I have sets of clips to identify each phase and I want to kind of go through that and show you guys how interesting the set is and uh, break down some unique things and things that both characters are going to be looking for. So I hope you guys really liked it. Like this, I did take a, I did take a lot of your feedback from the first video and put it in here. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. We got a lot to talk about today, gamers. All doctors to the ER. All right. So looking at our first bullet point for our first phase, the AMSA phase of Big House, we've got we got tech flubs from Mango, which maybe you're saying, okay, well, is that something AMSA really did well? And I'm gonna argue, yes, it is because of the pressure AMSA would put out onto Mango, but also I think as the mid-tier Yoshi player coming in to the set, this is going to be something that you're going to be kind of looking for, trying to exploit more than maybe other characters that might not have to be looking for that so much and taking your full advantage of that. And so Mango is going to be giving Amsa a little bit more here. And I wanted to kind of just point this out really quickly to show how impactful just a few flubs can be on a match, especially when you are a space animal player. So our first clip is going to be uh, right at the very beginning of the set. We're going to see that Mango actually, if you look here, there's a wave shine. And then there's no turnaround on the up smash. Amsa might have tried to tech it anyway. Maybe gotten a punish. But Mango's turned around, so there's no need to worry about any of that. So now there's a grab, which is great at zero, right? You're not going to be able to crouch cancel or anything to reversal that. So you have a setup. The Mango doesn't go to edge. He goes high. So maybe, again, maybe a little bit of nerves. Uh, regardless, that's going to be another situation for Amsa to get another grab. Another down smash. Does go to edge. Tech flub again. We're gonna punish, miss our tech again. Amsa misses his punish, but he's still gonna keep be able to pressure Mango's shield out right here. So you're gonna notice Mango went from zero and watch this down air to you know several percent more, right? Where we can see that Mango Mango's percentage is going to you know 55 by the end of the clip, but certainly I think he gets to about 67 ish percent, and that's gonna be a lot of damage coming out from you know nerves and some tech flubs coming out really early, right? And so you know. Amsa just kind of getting in close and Mango even getting an opening and dropping that is going to be huge. And so that's going to be a big part of how uh, this matchup is going to work for Spaceys. You can call it the Spacey Tax if you want, but regardless, uh, you got to make sure you're coming in with those clean punishes or mid-tiers are absolutely going to take advantage of that. And that's something that Amsa has to look for because as a mid-tier maid, you don't, you can't always rely on everyone playing really clean because that's what, you know, invalidates your character a lot more, right? So that's our first clip. We're gonna look at our second one here. We've got Fox jumping around on a platform. We're gonna see a little bit later in the same game. So now uh, there's our punish. We see a little, we see a miss shine. So you're gonna notice right here. So we see Fox land next to Yoshi, right? And uh-oh, uh-oh, he's pulling out the cursor. You know what that means. So we see, it, well, when Fox is right here, right, on top of Yoshi, this is just, this is shine town, okay? This is where you wanna be. You see Mango wave dash through, there's no shine, right? Maybe Amsa jumps because he's trying to get hit out of the air by shine so he doesn't have any lag, can't be punished. Regardless, Mango whiffing and now he goes for a quick back air, hoping he can catch Yoshi maybe. But it, once you're out of position and you're throwing out quick moves like that, again, Amsa very ready to punish. It's something he really is looking for. Comes in with the Nair at the knockdown percent. Um, Mango rolls in, knockdown again. Uh, now we've, we've got... Mango on the platform. Look, and, and notice when it rains, it pours, guys. We've got Fox on the platform. Misses his shield drop. Tried to go for a conversion off of his drill. Rolls. Gets up smash. Mango started this at advantage. 
He started this. Look at the, how this all began, guys. This began 24% once it's a close match despite Mango's earlier flub. Misses his back here. 24%, 51%. He could still be okay, but his percent's higher. Misses another flub, taking so much damage. And he does kind of get out in this scenario. So it's not too bad, right? Gets an opening. Misses again. And watch this. Comes in for the back air another time. So we're seeing a repeat of things that are happening back to back to back. Tech flub, immediate back air. Tech flub, immediate back air. And this is going to be something Amsa is absolutely going to eat up, right? So this is our up air that we get right there. And that's going to be huge for Amsa. So we went from we went from them being basically even to a huge gap between them. Amsa can now land a variety of moves and make the neutral much easier for him. Mango still has to be very careful against Yoshi. It's very hard to knock Yoshi out of double jump armor at this percent. And so this this situation's uh the situation's tough. And and it's something that you need to be really mindful of when you're playing Fox Yoshi, right? You want to make sure that you're always thinking about how how to just hit your stuff cleanly. And that doesn't mean play super safe because Mango, when he is hitting his stuff, as we're going to see in a little bit, is going to be that much scarier. But this is just such an important thing that made a big difference. And it was some of the biggest open ups that Amsa got in, in the, at least this first game against Mango. I didn't want to overly harp on it, but I did want to kind of point that out to you guys. But let's talk about what Amsa did right, because... I think we can we can say, okay, well, Mango messed up and, and that's why I'm so one. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there's there can be more to it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what Amsa did right. What I think was one of the most important things he was trying to set up. And that is going to be, that's going to be his corner pressure. Yoshi obviously has a hard time approaching. Yoshi can't really run in and do a short up nair like Fox can or run in and do, you know, safe up smashes or shines or whatever. Yoshi's very good defensively and keeping you out and that's great. Uh, but Fox could just laser you if you just wait, right? So Yoshi has to find a way to go in. So Amsa's gonna always trying to find a way, his way to push in. And then once he gets you cornered, that's where he can really start uh, messing you up. And so I wanna kind of highlight how important it is for Yoshi to be able to take advantage of the cornered Fox and how valuable that position was for him because that's where he got a lot of mileage against Mango. So let's go ahead and check it out first. Mango running very far away. Amsa on platform, Mango whiffs. Now notice, Amsa is dropping right here. You know I'm about to draw. Don't even, don't even think I'm not drawing right now, guys. So Amsa's dropping down right here, right? So he's, he's probably going to go down. The thing is, if he goes down really fast, he can, you can hit, you know, probably this spot, maybe this spot over here. So, Ma but he can also go a little farther. Like if he forward airs, he can probably hit like this spot. So Mango is going to go all the way over here to make sure he can punish or at least dodge the, all of these layers of attacks, right? It's going to be very hard. Mango doesn't know which one's coming and Amsa could just fake it or he could just double jump armor through any of Mango's attacks and punish. So that's exactly what he does. And it's a fine play. He goes really far. Amsa, notice what he does punishes this area right here. So the nice thing about this is Amsa probably could even react to Mango moving away, then comes in. This is the situation that he absolutely wants. This is the situation that he needs, right? Because now Fox cornered, now it can be time to have less ambiguous plays, right? Because if you're Yoshi, one of the problems, part of the reason you can't approach is because Fox can always just move away. He's so fast. He can always just run away from what you're doing. Fox in the corner no longer has that option. He's got to fight you a little bit more. He could run into you, but you could parry him, double jump armor him, or the Fox could try and jump away and escape. Fox rolls, doesn't want to deal with any of this. We're going to try and pressure him out. Um, notice it did kind of end up working out, but even though Mango does kind of get out here. I just want to point out, we don't, you don't just see Mango just rolling randomly a lot, right? Like Mango's, you know, really good out of shield, you know, really smart player. You don't see a lot of just raw rolls coming out from him. I think it just goes to show, maybe you could say nerves or whatever, but you could, you still have to admit that uh, even when Mango's really nervous, he often isn't rolling. And I think this is a testament to how strong this position is. And I'm going to keep it moving because I want you guys to see it working. So here it is. In our next clip, it's a couple stocks later, but the idea here is the same. So we have, let's uh, move it back just a little bit. Mango trying to hit Yoshi's double jump armor, needed more percent in order to knock Amsa out of it. Amsa gets a good position. Now again, notice this situation right here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the prime position, right? Fox cannot run this way. 
to avoid Yoshi's stuff. He, and if Yoshi is gonna start doing a bunch of, you know, double jump, nares, and back airs and whatever, and jabs and whatever, and maybe push you to edge, guard the stage really well with his eggs. It's all a mess. This is all a mess right here, right? This is the, this is the position you don't want as Fox, because Amsa can hit you. He could down smash or down tilt even, and set up a really good edge guard, and that's not something you want to deal with. So, where's the logical place to go? Up, right? It's just what we were talking about before. So Mango goes up, and he goes up, and then he comes right back down into up air. Now, Amsa could do this up air, and he could also challenge the platform. And this is absolutely perfect. So Amsa gets this open up right here, jab reset, misses tech again. Even if he did tech, he'd still be in a bad spot, but he does miss it, and he doesn't get to go. Because Mango's teching here and not here, he now doesn't get the option to, you know, go to the platform. So right now he's now he's he's opting to go this way because he doesn't want to get hit up over and over and over again. So that's a tough spot for him. But now he goes up. He recovers really high because it's going to be hard for Yoshi to get up there. And Yoshi can still struggle to cover the ledge. So Mango goes high. It's a good recovery. Amsa ready for it. Hits the egg because he can aim his egg while he's going to the ledge. Goes for back air. Gets the gets a well spaced like first and third hit back air. And then goes for double jump nair. And he seals the game off of it. He seals the game off of his um, corner pressure. 97% coming out from Mango. When this all started, look at where the percent was, 19%. We went from 19 to 97% off of this up air, off of this corner pressure, off of this position. So again, this position right here, this is where it all started. Now we've got the second phase. The second phase of the Mango AMSA Grand Finals, and that's gonna be the Mango phase. This is going to be where Mango makes a uh, very exciting comeback. Spoilers for you that don't know. And he's going to bring it to game five. And I wanted to highlight two of the main ways that I think he does this. The first part of Mango phase is that he brings in a lot more of his offensive mix-ups. And that's going to be using things like shield. It's going to be meaning that he, he gets a little bit more aggressive. And I kind of want to just show off a couple differences with him doing that because I felt like in the first two games he was cornering himself more which we talked about how, how that was playing out and I think be in an effort to not corner himself so much and also to you know get some more confidence and control over the match I think he does take to some more offensive plays which I think is a great decision and I wanted to kind of talk about how he does that so let's take a look at our first clip see how he does it I'm gonna see he does come in and you're gonna notice right away that he's um, hitting more running shines than I think you know he you were seeing in like the first couple games. So that's already a good start. Not getting the biggest follow-up, but he is getting more out of that. So again, we're seeing. Uh, I'll talk about exactly what's going on here. So let's look at. Let's kind of break this down a little bit further. Not the biggest punishes. Mango often doesn't convert always the hardest off his openings, especially as Fox. But he is going to be getting some really interesting openings. So you're gonna. He's gonna come in. He's gonna shield which is not the strongest opening, but it doesn't get him punished. So that's also really interesting, right? Running in with shield, I think is something Mango's done for a long time. But let's talk about what he actually does offensively that's really interesting here. So moves away, dashes back and runs straight in. Does get, he catches Amsa actually turning around, trying to move away, which is really interesting. It means that Amsa did not think Mango was going to come in there, right? Because then he could have parried. He could have set up for something like that. So Amsa, so Mango out, had an outplay on Amsa right there. He came in with this running shine, and that should be a really juicy follow-up for Fox because it's just a complete outplay to get a running shine in a lot of situations like this. And it comes from the dashback run-in, which is, I think, something Mango really likes to do a lot. Likes that, likes that little bit of a mix-up, like, oh, you think I'm going to move away? Actually, I'm just coming in. It's a bit of a, you know, one-two step, and that's going to be really strong. Does get a bit of a uh, miss here, and Mango kind of maybe tries to chase down or reset. We see that moving away, creating a lot of space, but notice he's back in the corner. He's not gonna want that. So he's gonna move. So if we think about it like layered, he's gonna move forward, backward, and then you can kind of guess where this is going. Uh, he starts to move forward, but he gets caught out by Amsa. So notice actually that he, that by taking a little bit longer to come in, he actually gets caught out. So he's trying to, he's still trying to do some mix-ups, but he gets caught out. So I kind of wanted to point out that like, not just every time everything works, but I wanted to point out even when they're like mixing something up, but it just doesn't pan out for them. Uh, because that still shows that he's still changing up what he's doing and he's still hitting things that are still a little different, that are still working out for him. But let's go to something that might be a little bit stronger. So again, now we're seeing a good position for him. We're seeing a lot more movement, uh, seeing a lot more dashes before coming in. 
Amsa again. When you're at this, you're at this kind of space, and you're Yoshi, your little small Yoshi mid tier man. You just gotta crouch and, and kind of hope that you know you call out the fox perfectly, and it's gonna be hard, right? Because fox is very fast, and he's got a multi hit move in his down air that can just beat out what Yoshi does. So Amsa's kind of incentivized to just sit here, and because Mangos come in a lot faster before, Amsa really wants to wait, right? So let's look at that again. We're gonna do some frame by frame, even. So we see one away, two in, three away, and now we come in right around Amsa's down tilt, by the way. Maybe he predicted this, or maybe he kind of just wanted to call it out. He was like, man, this guy might come in after that first dash, maybe, and I just need to get him off me, because again, this is a tough spacing for Yoshi to maintain. Mango comes in, Running Shine, again, very impressive to get this Running Shine. We do get our up smash right here. So again, we're seeing like kind of the tempo change that Mango's making, adjusting to keep up with Amsa. I think tempo changes are something that are very important in Melee, and it's something that's not really talked about a lot, but we're seeing that coming out in a big way for Mango right here. And if you want to be an aggressive player, you really have to make sure that you are mixing your uh, timings up really well. So again, Mango using a dash back run in Shine, but making making it a little bit later, making the beats a little bit later and playing around Amsa because of that. So that's gonna be point number one for uh, phase two. And this is going to be much simpler. Like before we're talking about all this theory and you know, this tiny mix up. Now I just wanna talk about something really obvious. Let's talk about full hop up air. This is just a cool tool that I haven't seen other people really use nearly as much as Mango, or at least not in the way Mango's using it. Up air is a really interesting option for Fox because it's really strong, so it can break a lot of Yoshi's armor. And, but it seems like it might even play another role here. And so let's take a look. So there's our back air, which is gonna break our armor. And so there's our up air. Amsa spot dodge. Parry, but he went in the shield because he wasn't sure like Mango was gonna maybe drill. Or maybe he just wanted to make sure that he was going to be safe because it might not even be easy to get a punish off a of parry at zero on Fox. So again, Mango just, uh, he was going for a lot of these up airs and you're going to kind of see, you know, here at the end, he's actually going for another one. And this situation, very good for him because, it, you know, this is, this is most likely going to catch Yoshi out of the double jump armor and lead into kill. And this is, uh, you know, what Mango's looking for. So even though Mango did like several of them in a row, and of course you guys know, I'm sure, about how Mango just did it over and over and over and over on the Final Destination game on game five, and how he didn't get punished for it, this is because Yoshi wants to be jumping and moving around a lot. And even though Yoshi can do the up air we talked about, remember we said Amsa can get such a big punish in, in the phase one, it's still tough because Mango is mixing up what he's doing so much. And even if Mango, because it's it's almost like there's no way Mango would fall with this up air again, right? He always changes things up. It's Mango. We talked about how he was changing his offensive mix-ups up so much just a second ago. And now we're watching him fall off up air over and over. And so this is jarring for opponents to think about. Like, well, he's mixing up so much, but then suddenly he's just up airing. And it's weird, right? And so that's kind of that's kind of the confusion that he's kind of mixing in. So sometimes you got to know when to mix up. And sometimes you got to know when to just do the good stuff. How that impacts your opponent. So that's going to be phase two. Mango's in bringing back in much more offense and his tricky timing mix-ups and his uh, pushing out of the corner. And it's going to be his use of full hop up air and maybe mixing it up less even when it can kill just because, you know, Amsa's not going to be ready for it. And uh, it's, it's just it can just give you so much value. Now, with all of that said, right, they're both doing some great stuff. They're both missing some stuff. We've talked about both of those. We're going to go into game five or phase three we're just going to get some examples of like what really mattered what really what what changed things because it was it was it was very back and forth a lot of in a lot of ways game five what were maybe some of the most important things that really determined how the set ended because the, the the fifth game was unique third phase was was special and so i want to talk about the special third phase we're going to look at why amsa chose the stage and that was going to be because of the punish game you can get a better punish game as Yoshi on the stage and he didn't feel like he was hitting hard enough. Maybe that was because Mango was also throwing him off or just more prepared for his punishes. But either way, there's going to be harder punishes. Now, if you look, you're not going to see a platform up here, up here, up here. Uh, all my beautiful drawings, they are not platforms. They are just beautiful drawings and I need you to, I need you to remember that. That's going to mean that if you hit someone onto a platform, they can't slide off. 
they can't just land and you have to get up there and hit them with another move. If you hit them up, they just have to fall back down into you or go somewhere else or double jump and hope you miss. Also, it means that if you recover and you're Fox and you're recovering, that it's gonna be harder to get back to the stage because now you don't have a platform that you can land on. You have to go, you know, hide in somewhere or into the Yoshi or to the ledge. And so while this stage is normally one that Amsa wouldn't like, because Yoshi can get so many more mix-ups off of platforms and can reversal people off of platforms. Some of the stuff we've even seen, the punish game just mattered a lot. And that was something that Amsa really banked on. And we're gonna see there was actually an additional benefit to the no platforms, but I want to talk about the punish game first. So there's our up air that we're seeing, catching Mango out of his shield and almost gets a bigger punish, but then Mango actually gets a really big punish. And so now, because Amsa can't go to a platform, he's just got to come straight up into him. And so Mango is free to just up air, up air, up air. And there's no platform for Mango to land on that he has to like awkwardly dash and jump off of. He can just reposition however he wants by landing on the ground. And so it actually kind of almost sets up, you know, really well for both characters. Amsa almost gets a really good punish. Gets He wants to get his forward air out. Notice that. So if we look... Amsa's forward air almost out, but Yoshi has to, he's just got to lean back a little while farther before he can lean forward. Mango falls with his up air, very intelligent. We did see Mango normally going for up air later, goes for it earlier, and then he's going to get so much damage off of it. Um, whereas, we, so you can see this can work for Fox as well as Yoshi. And up air, you can see he's going to beat things from below, and that's going to be great for both characters. And now we've got Mango in a recovery situation, a little bit what I was talking about before. So he's got to up B. But again, where are our platforms? Are they there? Are they there? No, no platforms. So we've got to make some choices. We've got to make some choices. Mango's angles, I mean, you can go obviously down to the ledge, but we've seen, we just saw that Mango really doesn't want to do that, probably, um, given that he's double jumping and up being up the ledge might not be confident in his ledge dashes. Maybe it's a controller issue, maybe it's nerves. Could go this way. No, oh boy, beautiful arrow. He could go, you know, down above Amsa. He could try and go into Amsa. There's still a lot of angles he can pick. He could even go up just to make his drift ambiguous up here in the little magnifying glass. It depends, right? But it's tough because there's no platform that he can land on higher and not suffer landing lag. So he's going to go up and that's going to be easier for Amsa to react. It simplifies his edge guard, which is, you know, something Amsa again was talking about. Goes to center, not a bad choice, but the flames do end right before he hits the ground. Amsa with the double jump cancel. Now Mango's up being from a little farther away and with more percent. Amsa holds the ledge. You're going to notice like this little little explosion right here going to cover this area if Mango did go there. Maybe Mango could have went to this area, but of course Amsa could have potentially covered it too. So that's, that's just a good edge guard, but it also was made much easier by the stage. What's the big deal, right? So that's just happened one time. Mango gets pushed to edge and he's up being. And this is where if a lot of you guys have watched this set a lot, you know what's about to happen. But this, if you go for something and maybe it works a time or two, that's one thing. But if it stops working, it can be hard to justify continuing to use it. But Amsa does go with a move right beforehand, so maybe he's not gonna be ready for this punish, right? Amsa parries the up B with everything on the line and double jump cancel up airs, catches the miss tech, does it again, carries Fox off the stage with the down smash, and that is going to be the set. So the set, one of the biggest things that this set is decided by is this right here. Is Mango going, getting pushed to the ledge and going for this up B. So again, it comes back to what I was saying at the very beginning, making sure you're not messing, you're not flubbing your tech, making sure that you're staying clean in a lot of your scenarios, making sure that you're playing well. That's gonna, those are gonna be some of your biggest keys to winning as a higher tier against, you know, a mid tier character like Yoshi. If you're not, and you're in a tough spot and you go for something that maybe did kind of work before, you might have something tougher happen to you. Like this. You might get put in the combo video, down smashed off the stage, and you're gonna see the nice man jump around. While that is very exciting, I wanted to just make sure there was a good back and forth, that you guys were informed about how each player was contributing to their wins. So again, recap, phase one, Mango had some tech flubs. Amsa had great corner pressure and controlled the center well. Mango adapts in phase two, starts mixing in more offensive pressure, mixing in those shields, mixing in those quick or slightly delayed running shines and getting his punishes, and also just utilizing full hop up air to great effect. In phase three, 
at the at the peak of it all, what did it come down to? It came down to FD just not having platforms to lead to give better punishes to both players to make things close. But what did it all come down to? Even when Mango still had that lead at the very end, we did see in that last clip Mango had the lead. What did it come down to? It came down to up B from the ledge. Or up, D, up, up B when you're in a bad spot. When you were still in cornered and you didn't really have much else you could do about it. Up B made the difference. And that's why you got to make sure that you can be confident on the ledge or in those corner situations and in those high pressure situations. And so that's what it came down to. Amsa stayed strong, even though it's a difficult matchup, even though there was, you know, so much on the line. And that's why he was able to be the big house champion. So hopefully that makes some sense to you guys and you think that this was a pretty cool breakdown of Amsa and Mango. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thank you.